an AI-assisted scientific analysis of the Patterson-Gimlin film. Bluff Creek is a remote and wild area in Northern California, surrounded by dense forests and high mountains. The landscape is characterized by steep cliffs and gorges that form the course of the Bluff Creek River. The region is difficult to access, with only a few roads leading into the area. Most areas are accessible only by foot or horseback. The area surrounding Bluff Creek is now part of the Six Rivers National Forest. The region is known for its dense and remote forest landscape and is often described as a wild and inaccessible area. Bluff Creek is a small river that flows through a narrow canyon surrounded by high cliffs and dense undergrowth. The area became famous in October 1967 when Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin allegedly captured the legendary Bigfoot in the Bluff Creek area. The film shows a creature that appears to move fluidly and realistically, with the muscles and tendons in its legs clearly visible, which is a feature that is difficult to fake. The Patterson-Gimlin film was captured on October 20, 1967, in Bluff Creek, California. The filmmaker was Roger Patterson, an amateur geologist and researcher who was interested in searching for Bigfoot. His friend, Bob Gimlin, accompanied him on the expedition and was also involved in the filming. Patterson and Gimlin had already undertaken several expeditions to search for Bigfoot before they captured the film. They had heard reports from other witnesses and researchers who had reported sightings and tracks of Bigfoot in the Bluff Creek area. The size and weight of the creature in the Patterson-Gimlin film are difficult to determine, as there are no objective reference points. Therefore, Estimates are based on visual comparisons with other objects in the film and on subjective assessments. Some estimates suggest that the creature in the film was about 2.1 to 2.4 meters tall and weighed about 225 to 300 kilograms. These estimates are based on the size of the trees in the background of the film and on the assumption that the creature was standing upright. There is no evidence that the film footage is fake or that anyone has tried to manipulate the footage. Despite numerous attempts to debunk the Patterson-Gimlin film as a hoax, there is no conclusive evidence. Several scientific investigations of the footage have been conducted, including analysis of the movements of the creature, muscle movements, and proportions. Many of these investigations have confirmed the authenticity of the footage and found no signs of a hoax. The proportions of the creature in the film are unusual and differ significantly from a human body. In particular, the length of the arms and legs, as well as the size of the head, are difficult to fake and may indicate that it is actually an unknown creature. The musculature and fluid movements of the creature in the film are very realistic and appear difficult to fake. In particular, the movements of the muscles on the back, legs, and arms look very natural and are difficult to simulate. The movements of the upper body of the creature in the film are very fluid and organic. They show a complex and realistic muscle movement that is difficult to imitate. When the creature moves, the shape and position of its muscles change, indicating that they are real muscles that lie beneath the creature's skin and change depending on its movement. The muscles in the creature's upper body are depicted in great detail in the film. One can clearly see the contours and shapes of the muscles, indicating that they are indeed real muscles and not just a simple costume. Similarly to the upper body, the movement of the leg muscles in the film shows a complex and realistic muscle movement that is difficult to imitate. The leg muscles change and move in a way that would be hard to imitate with a costume. As the creature moves, the shape and position of its leg muscles change. These changes are very realistic and correspond to the movements observed in real animals. The depiction of the leg muscles in the film is consistent and fits the movements and anatomy of the creature throughout the film. This suggests that it is not a post-production manipulation, but an authentic representation of the muscles. The depiction of facial muscles in the Patterson-Gimlin film is one of the most discussed and controversial topics related to the authenticity of the film. Some experts argue that the facial muscles in the film are too realistic and complex to be fake. Similarly to the depiction of muscles in the upper body and legs, the facial muscles in the film show complex muscle movements that are difficult to imitate. The movements of the facial muscles appear very realistic and show impressive muscle control. It is highly unlikely that the facial muscles in the film were faked. Even with modern CGI technology, 
it would be difficult to create such a realistic depiction, especially without any digital errors or anomalies. The year of the film's creation, 1967, also rules out such possibilities. There were already reports of Bigfoot sightings in the Bluff Creek area before the Patterson-Gimlin encounter. In the 1950s and 60s, there were several reports of unusual incidents in the area, including large footprints and strange screams. The absence of known and logical methods for faking the Patterson-Gimlin film speaks to the possibility that the creature depicted in the film actually existed. Considering that the film was shot in 1967, when special effects and CGI did not yet exist, it is unlikely that anyone would have been able to fake such a realistic depiction of a humanoid creature. Furthermore, there is no evidence that Patterson and Gimlin had the necessary knowledge and equipment at the time to fake such a film. The lack of evidence for a fake has also contributed to maintaining the controversy over the authenticity of the film. The muscle contractions in the Patterson-Gimlin film are an important clue to the authenticity of the depicted creature, as they are very difficult to fake. The way the creature's muscles and joints move does not seem human and cannot be replicated by a man in a gorilla suit or any other type of costume or puppet. If the film were a fake, it would be extremely difficult to replicate the muscle contractions so precisely that they appear realistic and convincing. It would have to be an incredibly elaborate and expensive production to achieve such a depiction. Over the years, many experts have examined and analyzed the film to determine whether it is real or not. Although there are different opinions, many of the experts have classified the film as authentic. Grover Krantz was a well-known anthropologist and cryptozoologist who extensively researched Bigfoot. He examined the Patterson-Gimlin film multiple times and believed that the film is authentic and actually shows a real creature. Krantz was particularly impressed by the morphology and anatomy of the creature in the film. He argued that the proportions and movements of the creature are not human-like and that it has a unique anatomy that is not easily faked. He also believed that the musculature of the creature is depicted very realistically and cannot be simply imitated by a costume or puppet. In addition, Krantz argued that the contextual information of the film, such as the location and timing of the footage as well as the experiences and skills of the cameraman, suggest that the film is genuine. He also emphasized that the film should not be considered in isolation as evidence for the existence of Bigfoot, but as part of a larger corpus of evidence that includes sightings, tracks, and other evidence. John Bindernagel was a Canadian wildlife biologist and Bigfoot researcher who extensively studied the Patterson-Gimlin film. He believed that the depiction of muscle movements in the film was extremely unusual and difficult to fake for a human-like creature. Bindernagel argued that the movements and musculature of the creature in the film are not human-like and that it would be extremely difficult to fake such a depiction. He pointed out that the way the upper body and leg muscles moved could not be explained by a man in a gorilla suit or other methods of fakery. In his research, Bindernagel focused particularly on the anatomical details of the creature, especially the way its muscles and joints moved. His analysis of the movements and muscle contractions of the creature in the film led him to conclude that it was something that could not be human and that it was unlikely that the film was a fake. Jeff Meldrum a renowned anthropologist and expert in hominid research, has extensively examined and commented on the Patterson-Gimlin film. He has particularly focused on the depiction of the creature's musculature. Meldrum believes that the movements and musculature of the creature in the film appear very realistic and could not be faked without significant effort and advanced technology. He has conducted several analyses to show how the creature could naturally walk and move based on the movements and anatomy shown in the film. He argues that the musculature of the creature is particularly realistically depicted and suggests a real living creature. All three scientists closely examined the anatomical details of the creature in the film and concluded that the depiction of musculature and anatomy is very realistic and would be difficult to fake. They particularly emphasized the movements of the muscles in the upper and lower back, the movements of the leg muscles, and the contraction of facial muscles, which would indicate an actual biological creature. It is not necessarily impossible to fake the depiction of muscles in the Patterson-Gimlin film, but it would be very difficult and labor-intensive to do so. This is because the depiction of muscles in the film is very realistic and detailed, suggesting that they are actual muscles lying beneath the creature's skin. 
If one wanted to replicate a creature that looks as realistic as the one in the Patterson-Gimlin film, they would need to build a very high-quality costume or very realistic puppet and carefully imitate the muscles and movements of the creature. This would be a very demanding task, especially considering that the film was shot in the 1960s, when the technological capabilities for producing special effects and animatronics were not nearly as advanced as they are today. Furthermore, it would be very difficult to build a doll or costume that moves as naturally and fluidly as the creature in the Patterson-Gimlin film. The movements of the creature in the film are very smooth and organic, requiring a very complex and realistic muscle movement. For these reasons, it is highly unlikely that the depiction of the muscles in the Patterson-Gimlin film was simply faked, and there are good reasons to believe that the muscles shown in the film are actually real muscles lying beneath the creature's skin. There is no credible evidence that the Patterson-Gimlin film is a fake. Considering that the film was shot in 1967, when special effects and CGI did not yet exist, it is unlikely that anyone would have been able to fake such a realistic portrayal of a human-like creature. Furthermore, there is no evidence that Patterson and Gimlin had the necessary knowledge and equipment at that time to fake such a film. Both were hunters and outdoorsmen, but they were not special effects experts or filmmakers. The absence of evidence for a fake, despite many skeptical voices and controversial discussions, also speaks to the authenticity of the film. Faking such a film would normally be accompanied by evidence such as cut marks or indications of the use of costumes or other materials, but no such evidence has been found. In addition, experts such as anthropologist Grover Krantz, primatologist John Bindernagel, and biologist Jeff Meldrum have also judged the portrayal of the creature's anatomy and musculature in the film to be authentic and very difficult to fake. Overall, Many factors suggest that the Patterson-Gimlin film could be genuine and that the creature shown in the film actually exists. If you like this AI-assisted scientific analysis of the Patterson-Gimlin film please hit the like button. For more videos on Bigfoot and Sasquatch subscribe to the Squatch Mafia channel at YouTube. Thank you for watching.